publication released by the Texas Impact Education Fund says, today in Texas and the U.S., the foundational questions of healthcare are questions of justice. And one of the questions is, should resources be distributed in the community to ensure that all members of the community receive the same quality of goods and services? Good question. Well, the book of Acts says, all the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had need. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Those who were being saved. Who in our country needs to be saved? The word salvation in the Bible, let's look at that. At the root of it is sal, that healing ball that we need to apply in order to be healed. So who needs to be saved? According to the Institute of Medicine, 18,000 people in our nation still die each year unnecessarily because they lack affordable health coverage. Many of these are from low-income families. Studies show that the most significant cause of homelessness and bankruptcy in this country is medical bills. An estimated 60% of bankruptcies this year will be because of medical bills, and 75% of those declaring bankruptcy as a result of medical bills have health insurance. And there are 46 million Americans who lack health insurance. That's one in every seven Americans, roughly. Now, someone told me that this number, someone I know told me this number uh, is static. And that's because among those 46 million people without health insurance, many of them are between jobs. That makes sense. But with an estimated 6 to 7 million people losing their insurance by the end of this year because of the present recession, between jobs becomes without jobs and without insurance. These are a few of those crying out to be saved. But so long as we are stuck on matters of money and insurance and political ideology, our conversations about health in America will flare up so loudly that those voices will not be heard. And those conversations that only provide reasons to justify our feelings, they'll only persuade us to stay asleep while the storm rages on. <clears throat> when Jonah was on that boat, sleeping with God, meanwhile summoning a terrible storm, Jonah's slumber was enabled by the sweet, seductive voices of apathy and indifference and any host of reasons he could muster to justify him not going to Nineveh to preach to the people who were in need of salvation. But when Jonah finally woke up, and saw how dire the situation was when he saw that these men had thrown everything that they could off of that boat in some desperate attempt to stay alive. When he finally understood that if he didn't throw himself overboard, that these men would all die, then Jonah jumped into the water. Stan Greenberg is the chair and CEO of Greenberg Quinlan Roswell Research, and he reports that 60% of health insurance holders are dissatisfied with the health care system, but three-fourths of them are satisfied with their own insurance. The conflict is that the macro system is unacceptable, but the micro system can be livable. Change is wanted, but it has to be the right kind of change. That's the conflict. That's the nature of the conversation. We don't want to jump in the water because of what it might do to us. It's like we're in that cartoon where the minister is about to baptize this guy, and he says to him, Brother, when you're baptized, everything that goes under this water belongs to God. And in the very next frame, he's immersing this guy in the water, but the guy still has one hand held above the water holding his wallet. <laughs> Never mind the fact that we're paying more per capita for less health care in this country. What will it take for us to wake up and realize that we can no longer afford to stay on the boat? It's us that have to jump in the water, unless we're comfortable with everyone suffering the consequences of what we don't do. Martin Luther King Jr. says, we shall have to repent in this generation, not so much for the evil deeds of the wicked people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. And when was it, the disciples asked Jesus, that we saw you sick 
and we didn't help you. And Jesus replies, I tell you the truth. Whenever you did not do it for the least of these, you did not do it for me. The healthcare industry makes up one-sixth of our economy. That's a sobering account of our country's values, our identity, and what we stand for. When we have a legacy of nearly 10 million children without health coverage, families one medical emergency away from bankruptcy, elderly and infirm people without the resources necessary to live or die in relative comfort and with dignity, but that's our economy. And we can talk in terms of dollars and cents long enough to ride out this storm, can't we? We can find reasons to keep ourselves from having to jump into the water, can't we? The Hebrew prophets consistently said that the measure of a nation's righteousness and integrity is how it treats its most vulnerable. We can find a million reasons to stay on that boat in hopes of riding out the storm, but Christ gives us one reason. One all-encompassing, inescapable, and always victorious reason to jump in the water when he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Thomas Aquinas said, Anyone who says they love God but hate their neighbor is a liar. Truth, then, is treating everyone with the very love that we ascribe to God. God who loves all of us, regardless of who we are or where we come from. And one way we demonstrate that love to each other is to not sleep until we all receive health justice. <clears throat> Nearly 16 years ago, a single mother named Donnell was alarmed that her 18-month-old daughter, Michelle, had a 140-degree fever. So she raced to the nearest emergency room at Michelle at the hospital, informed her that her HMO didn't cover her there. So Michelle went into a seizure while the attendants at the ER told Donnell that she would need to take her daughter to another hospital for her to be treated under her HMO. Donnell pleaded with them to treat her daughter, but her desperation was seen as a threat. So Donnell and Michelle were escorted out of the hospital. They made it to the other hospital where Michelle was covered under Donnell's HMO. But when they got there, Michelle went into cardiac arrest. The doctors tried to revive her for 30 minutes before she expired. My family endured a similar experience two years ago. Our two-year-old son, Mac, woke up in the middle of the night with a high fever, and he proceeded to go into a seizure. An ambulance picked us up within minutes of me calling 911, and I remember vividly holding Mac in the back of that ambulance. I was scared to death about what was happening, and the EMT smiles at me and he says, Dad's a little nervous. It's going to be okay, Dad. I didn't know whether to hug him or hit him. <laughs> By the time we got to the hospital, Mac was more conscious and not showing signs that would require the hospital by law to admit it. But thankfully, our insurance covered us at this ER. One of the doctors even said to us, you did the right thing coming here. When all was said and done, we had a prescription in hand to fight whatever it was that caused that fever in the first place, and we were free to go home. We were thankful. We were exhausted. And Mac was a trooper. But I still have my children. Donnell does not have her daughter. And if she received immediate and just treatment that night in the ER, my show will be 17 years old right now. There's no justice in the fact that her daughter is not starting her senior year of high school in a few weeks. There's no justice in the fact that my son received health care and her daughter did not. As Dr. King also says, a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Jonah was only human, just like we are. And he ran from his Lord as long as he could. But in the end, he ran out of reasons to keep running. And he jumped into the water. Let us pray for the sake of health justice for all of our neighbors that we would do the same.